welcome to Refuge Church Online. We are so glad that you've tuned in with us. If this is your first time, we're especially glad that you're with us. Uh, Today, we pray as always that you feel God's love, you hear God's voice, and that your faith is encouraged. Uh, You know, right now, I probably don't need to say this, but uh, most of our country remains in a season of chaos. And, and, And trust me, as we get into this message, the last thing I want to do is add to your chaos. But I do want to help you uh, if you might be suffering like so many of us uh, with chaos overload. Uh, I want to speak into the chaos that you and I are experiencing and the world around us is as well and see how God can encourage us uh, beyond it. You know, from COVID-19 to this political season and all the chaos that it entails on a daily basis, we've all had more than we care to intake. Unfortunately, I don't have the answers or the solutions for fixing everything, but I can tell you this, that there is truth to be found in the midst of the chaos. Today, we begin looking at a series of messages that hopefully is going to help with your chaos overload, and we're going to begin with something that I believe is very foundational, and it's the place that God would have us to start as we try to make sense and process uh, the lies from the truth. We're going to talk today about truth in chaos. Now, this truth that I'm about to share with you, it can settle any fear and it can answer even your deepest uh, questions. Uh, Why? Because we're going to be talking about God's truth. We're going to be talking about God's truth, uh, God's word. My prayer today is that you hear this message and that his truth uh, sinks deep into your heart and it transforms your mind and your heart. You know, the Bible tells us this about God's Word, that we need to read it, we need to study it, and we need to meditate on it because it is God's life-changing Word. Let me get into this and share with you what I'm talking about today. First off, God's Word, it is essential truth. God's Word is essential truth. More than the air you breathe, God's Word is essential for life and life beyond this life. More than what you eat, than what you drink, God's Word is just as essential. Matthew 4, 4, Jesus answered. He says, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus showed us early on in in one of his greatest temptation seasons that the only way to counter the lies that the devil will continually seek to toss into your life, into your mind, into your heart, is to know God's truth and to counter those lies with God's truth. It is through the Word of God that we understand how to live in this life and how to be prepared for the next life. It is through the Word of God that we understand the will of God. Everybody often says, you know what, I just, I just want to find uh, what I'm made to do. And, 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 and who I'm, I'm made to, to follow or, or, or what I'm, I'm to pursue in this life. And it is God's word that tells us God's will. In fact, it clarifies for us what is right and what is wrong in our lives and even in our society. Every word of scripture, the Bible says, is useful in some way, even if you don't see it that way. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17 says all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Now that brought to my mind the fact that so many people, the reason they don't want to hear that God's word is because it contradicts their life. And listen, It doesn't mean that you're right and God's wrong. It just means that you aren't embracing God's essential truth. But secondly, God's word is perfect truth. It is perfect truth. It is always reliable. And listen to this. It never contradicts itself. You will never read a book written and just inspired by man that's not going to have some contradiction in it. That's not going to be just full of of some opinions in the mix of truth. But God's word is different. It is always reliable. Psalm 1830 
says, as for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. As a, a, a buddy of mine used to always say, he said, listen, when it comes to God's word, you can take it to the bank. If God's word says it, you can believe it. If God's word promises it, you can hold on to that promise. And by the way, God's, God's word is full of God's love and God's promises, even amidst the warning. God wants to give you promise. Psalm 33, 4 says, for the word of the Lord holds true, and we can trust everything he does. But thirdly, God's word is timeless truth. God's word is timeless truth. Now, there's two things uh, about this timeless thing, and that is, first of all, God's word is eternal, so, so God's word will stand forever, but also that it does not matter how old the truth is, it remains relevant. No matter how times change, God's word and God's will never will. It is always relevant and truthful concerning what is right, or wrong in our lives. It may look different in the way it's played out and lived out in today's culture, but it is no different. Matthew 24, 35, Jesus says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. In these crazy times, we see day after day things that God's word told us would happen. Listen, things are, as the Bible says it would do in the last days, moving from bad to worse. We are in a season where people um, allow their gut to be their God, where people, they don't want to hear the truth. They only want to dictate the truth. Matthew 5, I'm going to read verses 17 through 19, but I have verse 18 up on the screen. Jesus said, don't misunderstand why I have, why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. Verse 18 says, I tell you the truth. Until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. And in verse 19, he says, so if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's law and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Listen, we have not been given the right to dictate or change God's truth. Only God holds that authority, holds that authorship. Culture and its perceptions, not only have they changed, they will continue to change. But God's word never will. It is timeless. It is eternal. Psalm 119, 160 says, all your words are true. All your righteous laws are eternal. Even going back to the old, if you want to say, Ten Commandments, those commandments are still true today. In fact, in many respects, there is much in Jesus' teaching where he quotes things that were told from prophets of old as well as from the Old Testament itself. Listen, number four, God's word is living truth. God's word is living truth. Now, listen to this one closely because this is where God's going to get into the cracks and crevices of your heart, mind, and soul. God's word is truth that is eternal. Therefore, it is always living, it is always relevant, and it is always able to change your life. 1 Peter 1, 2, 123 says, For you have been born again, but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever, because it comes from the eternal living word of God. Listen, God's word is alive, and it was that living word that brought you and I to life in Christ. There is power in each scripture that goes beyond words, but penetrates deep into the hearts and souls and the very being of each person. Hebrews 4.12 says, for the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and, and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Listen, even as I preach this message, I know that God's word is so powerful, I don't have to make it work. 
it always works. It always goes deeper than anything I could say. The reason I use so much scripture in basically every message I ever preach is because I don't want you to go, well, that's just his opinion. I want you to be forced to either embrace the word of God or choose to reject it. Listen, as you hear these words of life, I am confident God can use them in your life. I was just thinking about how, um, you know, often I'll have somebody that uh, they really, they give me the, the, the greatest compliment that I personally can receive uh, whenever they give me a report of how the message uh, moved them. Uh, as my dad would say, you know, hey, you stepped on all of my toes. And it wasn't that I stepped on his toes. It wasn't that I step on your toes. But listen, sometimes God's word, it steps on our toes. It turns us around. It helps us see, hey, that is not the way to think about that. That is not the way you should be living. Because God's word, it always has power. It is alive. Now, I want to share with you some ways that God's word helps us, even in the chaos, to live life to the fullest. Here are five things worth noting right now. It's not everything, but here are five key things. God's word is meant to, number one, give you hope. God's word is not a story of of, of, of just condemnation. It's awareness. It's truth. Again, sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it, it corrects. Sometimes it re- rebukes. But God sent Jesus in hopes of redeeming us forever and hoping to give us hope, not just in the moment, but forevermore. You know, Scripture says that faith comes from hearing and hearing from the Word of God. The reason the, the Bible is the place to start is because we would not even know the gospel if it was not for the inspired, God-breathed Word of God. God's Word is hope for all in any and every situation for now and forevermore. Psalm 119, 114 says, You are my refuge and my shield. Your Word is the source of of my hope. I want you to think about that when you do a, a book report or something. I've, I've done a lot of different research papers and all in my undergrad and my master's degree, and, and I really hope I never have to do those again. But, but you know, you always had to cite your sources. Like, hey, where did you get this from, and, and what's the credibility of where you got that from? I always use the number one source in my, in my uh, messages, and that is I go to the source, the Word of God. Listen, God's Word, it gives us hope no matter our situation or what chaos abounds. We can count on God's Word even when we can't count on anything or anyone else. Psalm 135 says, I am counting on the Lord, yes. I am counting on him. I have put my hope in his word. I'm sure you've seen the bumper stickers or or, or signs before that said, you know, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. That's where I stand, not because I'm seeking to just be stubborn, but because I'm seeking to allow the true greatest source of hope, the greatest book ever written and written literally by God to dictate my truth and my perception. Listen, God's word assures us of God's love, of God's grace, of God's forgiveness, yes, of God's judgment. The fact that, that, listen, you know, some people may get away with some things this side of heaven, but they will not when they stand before God as we all will. But God's word also reminds us that if God is for us, who can be against us? We can get through anything. And listen, you need to hear this right now. You will, with God's help, get through even these things. Secondly, God's word is meant to light your path. God's word is meant to light your path. God's word sheds light, even when it doesn't give all the answers that you want or all the details that you might like. Uh, Because, you know, sometimes, listen, we can't make sense of everything and we can't see beyond it. But even in those moments when you feel like you can't see uh, beyond your hands, God can shed light on your situation, on what you can do while you wait on him and what he can do. Psalm 139, 105 says, your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. Verse 130 says, the teaching of your word gives light. So even the simple can understand it. Listen, when I feel the most overwhelmed, and feel like, again, I can't see beyond the, the, the inch in front of me. 
I open up God's word so that I can be grounded in that truth and be, and so God's word can shed light on maybe my dark uh, feelings. Listen, when you are searching for light at the end of the tunnel, God's word can show you the pathway to heaven, and God's word can show you how God can and promises to use the good, the bad, and the ugly in your life. But thirdly, God's word is meant to be heard and obeyed. Now, some people don't realize that. God's word is meant to be heard and obeyed. It's not just meant to be quoted. It's not meant to just be used to to slay people uh, and and say, hey, you're wrong and, and we're right. It's meant to change people. Listen, God's word means nothing and changes nothing for those who don't receive it and put it into practice. Luke 11, 28, Jesus replied, but even more blessed are all who hear the word of God and put it into practice. Listen, many quote scripture, but very few people actually live it out. James chapter one, verse 22 says, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. I want you to think about that. Listen, you're never fooling God. You're never fooling God. You are who he says you are, and he will do what he says he's going to do. And so you can't escape his consequences of your sin. You can't escape his surveillance of your life. Listen, Jesus says one sign, one of the greatest signs outside of love, outside of God's love in you, one of the greatest signs of a true believer is whether or not you actually seek to obey the word of God. If God's word says that you should be a part of a local church and yet you choose to say, no, no, me and God got our own thing going, is that right or wrong? It's wrong because God's word says we should not forsake the assembling together of one another. If you're living a lifestyle that is not pleasing to God, does that communicate that you truly love God? Listen, if you love God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength, you will seek to the best of your ability in his grace, in his strength, to do what he calls you to do. John chapter eight, verse 31 through 32, Jesus said to the people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. I have never sensed with someone who's totally given their heart and life to Christ that I have to force God's truth upon them. They want to know God's truth. They want to please God in all things because they have been changed from the inside out, and they don't just have guilt about getting caught about things. They have conviction about any things that God's Word commands. Listen, God's Word, it commands us. It calls for us to change. You can't look into the mirror of God's Word and it not reflect something that needs to change. But listen, God gives us all free choice. You have to choose to hear it. You have to choose to believe it. You have to choose to obey it. Then the scriptures say it will save you just as much as it will change you. Many people are so polluted by the truth that they think that they're getting in this world that just breeds chaos. They aren't willing or they don't have space. I'll often say this. You have to create God's space. Sometimes you have to pull away from all the chaos so that you lean in and hear God's voice of truth. James 1.21 says, Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. Now, some of you were blessed that you had someone uh, in, in your upbringing that planted some seeds and words of truth, and yet you have not decided yet to live those out. Which brings me to number four. God's word is meant to be taken to heart. God's word is meant to be taken to heart. For God's word to truly change you, I've said this before, it must not just be a head full of information, it must be received into the heart so that it can um, bring about transformation. Listen, God doesn't just want you to robotically obey his word. He wants your heart to long to know him and to long to obey him. Psalm 119, 11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. How often, if you're someone who has hidden God's word in your heart, and it is your true desire to to please him, to keep growing in him, 
you, you have something go on or you think about doing something and, and you're not even looking at your Bible, but God brings to your heart and to your remembrance conviction about what his word has to say about that matter. So you don't make that social media uh, post that you were thinking about doing. You don't retaliate with that person the way that maybe other people would have retaliated. You know, uh, you have to be careful about that. We all do in these times. Listen, when God's words are in your heart, they will change your life. Proverbs 4, looking at, I'm going to look at verses 20 and 21. It says, my child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Listen to this part. Let them penetrate deep into your heart. That goes on to say in verses 22 and 23 that I don't have up on the screen, for they bring life to those who find them and healing to their whole body. Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Listen, often in this life, we experience some level of hell on earth. And all we can see in that time is the chaos, is the trials, and the flaming arrows. It's un, in these times especially, God's word must be deep in our hearts, in our veins, and God's truth must be the essential truth that we rest all of our hope on when we have nothing else and no one else to do that with. When Job was, was suffering so much, you know, there's a reason that there's an entire book about Job and his suffering. Job, he found that when he was in his deepest valley, and he found himself somewhere he had never been before, in, in the greatest broke levels of brokenness in every which way, physically, emotionally, mentally, relationally, spiritually, he found that he had to hold on to God's word in his heart. Job 23, 12 says, I have not departed from his commands, but have treasured his words more than daily food. You know, sometimes, listen, you're going through something, you don't even feel like eating. You, you, you lose your appetite, but you need to still swallow and eat the words of God. But last but not least, the word of God, it is meant to stabilize your life. The word of God is meant to stabilize your life. God's word, God's truth, it is the greatest stabilizer for all. And by the way, it is the greatest stabilizer for our country. We don't need to rest on this side or that side, this political party, that political party. No offense to what each of you feel, but listen to me. We don't need a side. We need God's side. In fact, that's what I encourage you, even in your voting, even though you might feel like you don't have any ideal candidate to, um, to vote for. Let your convictions of God's word and the best you know it of God's truth being represented lead the way. God's word, God's truth. It is the greatest stabilizer. Listen, if, if truly our entire country from the, the president all the way down to the people was underneath the authority of God and allowing the truth found in God's word to lead us, then truly we would be able to say in God, we trust. We would not have unity issues. We would not have different things just tossing us and turning us with relative truth. Listen, it grounds us in reliable truth and never changing truth. Now, I want to I wanna end with this passage where Jesus, he clarifies the difference between someone who builds a life whether that's a marriage, whether that's a direction, whether that's a family, whatever the endeavor it is, he shows the difference between someone who builds on the truth of God versus those who try to build on any other stabilizing truth. Matthew 7, 24 through 27, Jesus says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall. Why? He says, because it had his foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great 
crash. Listen, the reason a lot of people's situations, relationships, and life has just crashed under the weight of this season is not just because of the weight of the season, but because of the stabilizing truth that is not underneath them, because they are not grounded in his word, because they have not built a life on the rock and they have been exposed. Listen, what is the foundation of your life? Are you building your life on God's never-changing truth that won't fail you or on things that are sure to fail you? Listen to this last scripture, Philippians chapter 2, verse 14 through 16. It says, do everything without complaining or arguing so that no one can criticize, live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Hold firmly to the word of life. Then, on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I did not run the race in vain and that my work was not useless. Would you bow your heads in prayer with me? Dear Heavenly Father, God, Lord, I just lift up each and every person, Lord, that is tuning in right now. God, first of all, I would pray, Lord, that they understand that every word that I have shared and every perspective I have shared. Lord, it is not my word, it is your word. It is not my perspective, but your perspective. God, may each person know that no matter where they are right now, you're willing to meet them right where they are with your love, your grace, your forgiveness. But God, you love them too much to leave them right there. God, I pray that each person, Lord, that has not yet trusted you, Jesus, as their Savior and Lord, they would choose to do so right now. God, I pray for that person, Lord, who needs to rededicate their life. Lord, they need, to, they need to put their life back on a firm foundation. They need to stand on the truth that was poured into their life or planted into their heart. God, help us not to act and live as those around us in the midst of the chaos, Lord, but may we live as children of God, shining bright, standing and grounded in your word, in your truth, in your spirit, in your love. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Now, I want to thank you so much uh, for joining us today. And uh, I always like to say a special shout out to all of our ministry partners. I want to thank those of you who continue to believe in this mission of loving, lifting, and leading people to Jesus. I want to thank you for those that, that, that regardless of your limitations, uh, you're seeking to live out uh, this mission, uh, where you live, where you work, where you play. And then I also want to thank each of you who continue to um, uh, support this mission, whether that be through your prayers, whether that be through your, your service, and whether that be through your support. If you would like to give a financial uh, gift, a tax-deductible gift to support this ministry, you can do so three easy ways. First of all, you could go to refugechurch.org slash giving, or you can simply text the word give, that's G-I-B-E, to 843 or you can mail a check to 203 Eddie Chastine Drive, Walterboro, South Carolina, 29488. As always, I pray God's blessings upon you, and I pray God's blessings upon your family. Uh, I hope to see you soon. If you've not been joining us at our 9.15 a.m. Uh, drive-in and outdoor uh, worship opportunity at the Ivanhoe uh, Family Cinemas, we'd love for you to come out. We've had great attendance uh, each week, and, uh, and we'll probably certainly continue that uh, through the month of October. Uh, look here soon to hear an announcement um, of, of how we will uh, transition inside Uh, That doesn't necessarily mean inside of our normal facility, but we will move towards inside worship and ultimately to um, a 9.15 and 11 a.m. inside services. So listen, continue to pray for our leadership, and we ask you to trust us as we seek to trust God to lead us. God bless.